Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Cade Junkerth, and today I'm joined by an awesome guest. Her name is Denise Piles. We actually met in a writing course that I did recently, um, and she was writing all about uh, mindfulness and journaling. I love some of the content she was putting out, so I just had to have her on the podcast. Mm -hmm. She's all about um, mindfulness and practicing journaling, and she works for Microsoft, so she's in the trenches with like the corporate life. So that's why I wanted her on here to, to speak and hopefully resonate with a lot of you guys that work regular nine to five or corporate office jobs. Um, and you're trying to figure out how to basically shut off some of the time and become more present in your life and not let, you know, your work consume your whole life. So I appreciate you coming on, Denise. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background and everything? Great. Thanks, Cade. And thanks, everyone, for joining or listening to this podcast. It's great to meet you, Cade, at the writing group that we challenged that we did recently. And I am so excited to be here just to share a few thoughts and insights on mindfulness. And so let me give you just a little bit of background so it doesn't blow everybody's mind. Is I'm actually a former nun, and wow. I was a nun for eight years. Wow. Then I left nonprofit church work, and it took a while, but I... I wanted needed and wanted to decide to to join corporate work as a program manager and I got hired at Microsoft and that's another long story about 43 job applications and one of them stuck and wow. I've been at the company at this time of this podcast for 13 years so one of the things that I've been doing as writing is integrating what I've done in my past life of living a life of mindfulness in my every day Okay. And I write about what mindfulness is for me today. And maybe like you, I don't know about you, but life sometimes feels like we are in a ball pit inside a bouncy house and that there's so much coming at us in today's life, in today's culture. And when we think about mindfulness, many people think about that you sit and you meditate outside or in a, in a space for hours. And that is one way to practice mindfulness. And it's a great way. But so often our lives are, you know, like it, it's, we're in that ball pit and everything's coming at us. And, and we were even talking about at the beginning of this podcast before we started saying, oh my gosh, we're at midweek already. Oh my gosh, the time is flying so fast. How does that happen? Right. And so what I offer is practicing mindfulness where you slow down, and really focus on what you need to be present to in the moment. And I call them micro practices of mindfulness, short practices. And so that's what I'd like to talk about today. And I'm really happy to be here. Awesome. Very cool. I didn't know that about you. So that's, <laughs> that, that's Good. cool though, because I feel like, you know, I almost would think someone would do the opposite, like get out of a corporate lifestyle and go into like something, you know, super um, you know, I would say like tranquil like that. And it's almost like you took a different path. That's very interesting. Um, what, yeah. what did you um, make that transition? What kind of, what was the turning point there? So I, I laugh because I tell people, it's like, I sort of did the reverse of many people's career paths, you know, working yeah. corporate for X number of years, retire or pivot to something else and do something in yeah. nonprofit and service. And I actually did the opposite. I did over 20 years of service in in a church community wow and of those years eight years i was a nun in the roman catholic tradition and i left for health reasons and, and needed to get off that train okay. and when i came to that point i i was sort of at the beginning lost about that and so i thought wait a minute what is it some things that i do and that i know that can help me pivot to where i knew i needed to work in corporate or have a job that can make, help me survive financially in in society today and so then i started going back and saying i journal i've been journaling since high school wow. i practiced mindfulness every day i lived it breathed it focused yeah. on it and right. so then I just started doing that in small spurts and that moved me on a trajectory to stay focused on a career path, what I need to do to pivot. And I worked on all my soft skills. I thought that's the strength that I have and I could learn the project management skills, which I did. Yeah. And then consistent, consistent application, 44 job applications, 43 of them were rejections. Wow. And one of them was a yes. And I've been on this path since then. Amazing. So again, those were some of the things about mindfulness. So awesome. 
Yeah, well, that's really cool because I feel like you you were able to establish these um, principles and these habits, have them in place before going into the corporate life and, and going in like making that transition. So um, for someone that, you know, is has been living the corporate life, they didn't they don't have these principles established, like what's the most efficient and effective way for for busy professionals to incorporate mindfulness and journaling into their daily routine? Good. That's a great question. First of all, I just want people to take a step back for a minute and just understand what mindfulness means, like just a yeah. simple definition, because sometimes people may confuse that with a religion. And so what I'm talking about is mindfulness as a as a practice of our personal development. If you know, we have in our personal development of category, fitness is one of them, which you offer and, pra- and coach people. Mm -hmm. Uh, finances, relationships, or other things. Well, spirituality or mindfulness is another category that's not associated with a religion, but some religions practice mindfulness, for example, in the Buddhist tradition or Mm -hmm. other religions. So, but what I think of mindfulness, it is a practice of paying attention and being fully present in the moment without judgment. It's it's observation, engaging in the moment without judgment. And so when you think about that in your corporate life, Think about how, what's the best way for me to be fully present in my work, in my personal life, in the moment, uh, through mindfulness, through presence, engagement, focus, without judgment, but just being in the moment for what it is. So that's just a simple definition I wanted to level set on that. So going back to your question about how do you incorporate that? Think about, first of all, one is like set your own expectations. Think about, um, and I, I guess I liken this to personal fitness of like high impact intensity training, hit training. It's short spurts that you're really focused on doing as best you can. And then over time, you see the benefits of that over time. Yeah. So if you want to start practicing mindfulness and you haven't done this in a pro- professional world that you are, Set your expectation that you just want to do something short time period and really um, be intentional about being in that moment. Right. For example, say, for example, I say journaling. Now, I've been journaling all my life and and I'm not talking about taking a notebook and writing pages and pages and pages. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I have two, both an app on my phone phone and I have a personal journal by my desk that I just leave open Mm -hmm. and what I'm talking about is taking a moment sometime in your day as an example and being just take a moment up say a minute and just to think what am I feeling right now what do I need to focus on right now what is my experience what is my intention today for the next hour or the next moment what's a word that comes to mind write it down as a word a bullet point a sentence or maybe you say, I'm not a writer, but a light, like to doodle. I like to draw. Yeah. What's that doodle? What's that sketch? So <laughs> though, that's the things. If you want to start, first think about your, your mindset and your intention of what do you want to do? How do you want to get calm? How do you want to get focused? If you're in this ball pit, which ball do you choose? And how do you want to just cho- focus on that ball? Be that your work, be that a project, be that your own inner you know, we're distracted by so many things. It's like, I got to get centered. I got to get focused. Yeah. What's your intention? And then can you take even one minute, 30 seconds, one minute, and just say, I'm just going to take a deep breath. I'm just going to focus just on that. I'm going to write one word about it. And that's one way to get started mm-hmm. in, in your corporate work, uh, in the ball pit, <laughs> right. how to get started. So, and yeah. how, how does someone know when to do that? Is it is it best to have a time per day or do you think it, there should be certain triggers that um, that almost trigger you to, to take action on doing that at specific times? Like say someone's feeling super stressed out, should that be a trigger for them to um, take that moment and, and do that journaling? Or do you think there should be a kind of a scheduled time per day for these practices? That's a great question. I, I recommend if you're just starting out, schedule it in your day or connect it with something that you normally do. Say, for example, you know, you're going to take a break after the first two hours of work and you have it in your calendar that you take a break, you know, or you go do a bio break or something, you know, go get coffee, water, tea or something. So when you do that, 
say, okay, when I'm going to go do that at this time in the morning, I'm not going to look at my phone while I'm getting water or getting tea. As the tea, as I'm in the microwave or it's boiling on, on your stove, I'm just going to stand there and I think I might just breathe or, or just might say, just say, I want to collect my thoughts. I just want to be present in this moment while that tea is getting ready or my coffee, or I'm just filling up the water glass. How yeah. am I doing? How am I present? So it's connecting to an activity that you're that you know you do every day. Right. right. So to connect that there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I so I've I've read the book Atomic Habits by mm -hmm. James Clear multiple times. I think it's a great book. It's <laughs> yes. probably the, the book I recommend the most for people. Yes. And mm -hmm. one thing he talks about is habit stacking. And mm -hmm. when I read that, you know. I went all in on stacking certain habits on top of each other and just be as productive as possible. But ever since I've gotten a little bit more into mindfulness and journaling and after talking with you and I had another podcast with another um, individual, Peter, who, who had a lot of knowledge in mindfulness and, and journaling as well. Um, I've been paying attention to having some of those moments, just be those moments and just kind of pay attention to, to what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. Uh, and it, it's been pretty, pretty eye-opening the the difference it can make when you do take some of those moments for yourself and just be more mindful, be more present. And it doesn't need to always be a hundred percent. Like I'm stacking all these habits on top of each other. That can be a great thing, but you got to find that balance is what I've kind of found. That's pretty awesome because I, first of all, I love the atomic habits and James clear about that sense of habit and stacking a habit and connecting that, especially when you're starting. And the other thing too, is the sense of the goal of mindfulness is to be present. Yep. And if say, for example, sometimes if you get to that point of whether you're journaling or you're getting something to drink or you walk outside and go, yep. I'm just aware of how beautiful this day is. Right. Or the sense of gratitude that I'm here just to enjoy this moment. Right. That's mindfulness happening as you're in the midst. Okay. And then it's like, then you go back into your work, into that flurry of that ball pit. And it's like, I, yeah, I've got, I've got entered. The benefit is like, I'm energized. I'm yeah. focused. I can go. Yes. So. I've, I've definitely noticed that. And I, I think, you know, going through trying to stack a bunch of habits uh, that that's been great. It's been great for productivity, but sometimes productivity can be improved by taking those small breaks is what I've found. You know, sometimes, like you said, you come back more energized. So, you know, guys, if you're listening to this and, and you're thinking of an easy way to, to get into mindfulness, you know, maybe think of a few habits that you stack on top of each other, or maybe think of a habit that you could stack more mindfulness or journaling um, in your routine. I, th I think that's an easy way to get started. So, yeah, that's a very good point. And the sense of the goal, then earlier, what you said is like, do you, you know, do you connect it to a habit or uh, when something happens, like you say, oh, I'm so stressed out. Yeah. The benefit is if you're used to connecting it to a habit, say, I'm going to take a break. That's a good, you know, productivity is encouraged. The more breaks you take, it helps improve your productivity and say on certain one, I'm really going to focus, set my intention about how I want to be present over time, that habit gets stronger. And right. then when you're in those moments, when I say, when work is, you know, uh, uh, there are moments in my work when things are flying so fast. And I thought, yeah. I just need to take a break and just clear my head. Yeah. You know, I'll say that. Then it dawns on me, okay, I need to pause. So for me, right. one of the micro practices is say, just practice a pause. Yeah. And, and I intentionally do that. I've actually done that with a team that I've been on. We started a meeting and I said, okay, for 60 seconds, I'm the timer. We're going to take a moment just to practice box breathing or some kind of breathing, breathe in and breathe out. And I said, I am the timer. When I say go, we're going to do that. And we'll do that on camera together. And so we did it for 30 seconds and went right into the meeting. And people was like, yeah, I didn't know I needed that. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. and, and we had a productive meeting. Nice. So, what you'll when you start just by attaching that desire to be mindful to be fully present with a habit that you're already doing mm -hmm. then over time you get to see this pattern develop and strength within and yep. then it becomes your go-to source when you are aware of oh my gosh this is really a stressful day yeah okay i like that and you so you talked about building strength with that with the habit of being more mindful you know how can someone build kind of the muscle of shutting off because this is something we talked about uh before the podcast and everything um like 
I, I've just heard from some of my clients and my friends, some people close to me, that sometimes work can get super stressful. There's bosses breathing down your neck, all this type of stuff, lots of pressure. <laughs> so yes. how can someone build the muscle of just even though all that pressure is there, having the ability to shut off and be a little bit more present and mindful in the moment? Yes. Uh, I remember when you talked about, you and I had a conversation before this podcast began, and I actually had this inside, I think the afternoon after we talked, based on how we were talking and your your focus on fitness is that mindfulness is not like a light switch back here that you flip off and on. You can right. turn it off and on. That it really is a muscle that you build. Yeah. And so this you tend to that muscle. So one of the things I, you're, you're hitting a, a nerve for me in the sense that that's what work is, at least in, in tech world, is that, you know, it's this pressure situations, crunch time, everything's in escalation, everything feels urgent. The boss says, I want more, I want more. Yeah. You know, when is this done? I wanted it yesterday. So right. that, it's that sense of everything seems to be firefighting mode. And so one of the things is that at the end of the day, that I, the one one of the ways to start building that muscle is I just take it. Sometimes it's only one minute, but I try to take maybe two to three minutes is that I, and I put it on my calendar. If I'm, you know, there are a few days when I shut off at five, but you know, like a little bit later when I do, I put it on my calendar and I take that time just to sort of, it's almost like letting my mind just kind of, um, um, catch up like with all of the, that racing mind. So I either open a page on my laptop and I just like, okay, what's, what's racing through my head right now? And I just write it down yeah. or uh, on my notebook. So it's like clear, the, I, I call it, it's like, it's a moment of just to clear the chaos, clear my head, yeah. look at my calendar, what's tomorrow. It's like, I call it like when writing, we talk about prep the page. Mm -hmm. And so, so this is a mindfulness ritual that I do nearly every day to build that muscle of, so that I, of clearing my head prepping for tomorrow, writing down what's left undone today and say, I am okay with letting that go today. Yeah. And then, and then it's like mentally imagine that when I turn off my laptop, I have shut down work for the day. Right. And then, and, and what I've learned over time is that it really does free. It's like, I, I am focused and present at home, personal life or what in the rest of the time now sometimes that's really short like two hours <laughs> you know it's like shut off at 10 o'clock yeah. or but but it's that sense of that then, then and I sleep really well and so the sense of nourishment so that I can come back fresh and ready and go at it the next day so I've practiced that ritual nearly every day and it's a way and I see it as that way of like small uh short burst of exercise over time builds strength right right I like that and one thing that made me think of is have you ever heard of the quadrants where it's like it's urgent but it's not important or it's mm -hmm. urgent and important it's neither urgent or important and i forget what the other one is yeah <laughs> it's urgent and important urgent yeah. not important um important but not urgent yeah, yeah, yeah. opposite stuff like that yeah, yeah. i've seen the quadrant yes <laughs> so that, that made me think of that because i think a lot of times when we're trying to shut off for the day you know there's so many tasks that could be done but when you think of it like that you know try to if it's if it's not urgent and important just don't worry about it like it's still going to be there right it's still mm -hmm. going to be there the next day or even if it's important but it's not urgent right so so there's certain tasks that make it seem like we have so much to do but a lot of times it's you know it's going to be there that next day you know just just take the time to to clear your mind get a good night's sleep and you're going to be better at accomplishing those tasks the next day than you are stressed about it right now. Right. Yeah, so that's yeah. what that made me think of. Yes. So. And the, a common in tech world is that it's 20 things that are urgent on your plate. The <laughs> other, the other psychology is that we really it's, it's in three is this kind of magic number. It's like a, a tripod of a stool. It's like, it's stronger uh, that three that we think really in threes like we remember, like we remember three things. It, we have a hard time remembering five or seven things, but yeah. it's easier for the mind to remember three. And so the sense of priorities or to say urgent and important, if yeah. your stack is more than three, then it's like, you need to rework that because that sense of like, I can only do three things right now that's important. And 
everything else to balance. And it really does help level set. But to do that, do that exercise of the box of the quadrants or that sense of thinking about that with intention. It's like, I want to do this in a non-judgmental space because sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves going, gosh, I didn't get everything done. It's not perfect, et cetera. It's like, stop. I, I say to myself mentally, stop, yeah. let that go and just be with what is on your plate right now right. And, and try to do that objectively. And that's what mindfulness can help you do. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and one thing I do for my daily journaling is literally I write down the one thing that I need to get done today. And so as long as I get that one thing, like that's usually the important, urgent thing. So try to think of that thing for you. As long as you get that done, you're good. And just like the rest of the stuff, you know, have it on your task list, but but know that, you know, it'll be okay if you don't get to it today and you can get to it tomorrow. That That's kind of a practice that's helped me so that, you know, it's just less overwhelming, just writing down the one thing that I'm like for sure focused on for the day. Cause it, it can get very overwhelming having 20 things on your list. You're like, I got to get all this done. <laughs> so I still do have a lot of things on the list, but like just narrowing it down to the one thing that's the most important has helped me um, be less overwhelmed each day. Yep. So. That's fabulous. I mean, that's focused mindfulness there, okay? Because it's not so much three, it's juggling all the balls that saying this one ball. Yeah. If I do anything today, this is the most important ball in my ball pit right. in the bouncy house yeah. that I need to focus on. That's that's mindfulness practice right there because you, you know yourself, you're self-aware, you are aware of your surroundings, and you are aware of the moment of what needs to be done right now. And that's that's the goal. I mean, because, you know, most of the time it's like, what, you know, chaos. Yeah. And yeah. when that chaos happens and say, I, you know, I didn't measure, I didn't hit that one thing. What's important too is to say to ourselves with a mindfulness observation, that's okay. Cause I'm I'm a recovering perfectionist. And so it's a sense, oh, I didn't do it. I, you know, that gosh, I, I didn't show up as my best. Yeah. I practice the pause and I just say to myself, let it go. It's okay. You did your best to show up today. Yeah. So that self-talk that we do as well is another way to practice shutting things off being present in the moment and letting go. And then you could receive the next moment you're there, whether you're out with friends, you're, you know, you're with your family, you're having a great time outdoors, you know, then you can be, then it's like, it, you're not carrying that mentally with yeah. you. That self-talk is huge. I think that's a huge factor for a lot of people. They have negative self-talk. They beat themselves up. I was just talking about this with someone else recently. And it's like, you know, treat yourself like you would someone you love, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't usually probably talk to the, the person, you know, you very much care about it's maybe a, a family member, or a significant other, the way you're talking to yourself. So like, you know, be thinking about that. Like, are you treating yourself the way, um, you know, you would want someone to treat someone you love? Uh, that's something I've, I've thought about that's helped me. Um, another thing I wanted to uh, kind of pick your brain on about is, just the things that we can control. Uh, this is something I was thinking about recently. And, and I think I heard it on another podcast, forget which one, but it's like, we have like a thousand thoughts an hour. I think it is something like that. And we've got like 500 actions that we're doing per hour. And then we, we feel like something like 20, emo 20 different emotions every hour. So it's just a lot of different things. Like you're saying the ball pit, you know, it's all this different stuff, all these thoughts, actions, emotions, everything's flying all over the place. What do you find is the the best way to control all that? Because it that can make it seem very overwhelming. So, you know, what do you think is the best way to control your thoughts, actions, emotions? What what do you think is the, the best practice for that? Thank you. That's a Again, that's so spot on about how we're living today. We are uh, in our digital devices. Like, yeah. look, I mean, my office, I've got three, you know, multiple digital devices and in, in, in that, that there's so much going on. And we are, it's that racing mind right. that is generated by all of the distractions. One of the things that helps me, again, is connected to what you said earlier about self-talk. Mm -hmm. That is in our control. Yeah. And the, I also write about, I, I see I micro practices of mindfulness for me. I write about one sentence journaling, practicing the pause. And the other thing is managing your self-talk. And yeah. what I've, the insight I had is that 
the voice talking inside your head to you is the most important voice you hear and listen to. 100%. So the sense of, so then I think, so part of me is that, that practicing the pause. And then I ask myself, what am, can I control? And we can control very little things in life, but we can control I'm going to, who I decide to listen to, yeah. I'm going to listen to the positive energy and voice inside my head. And I, I have this mental work that I turn the, vo I, I'm old school, like radios that actually had dials <laughs> in analog mode. And I said, I'm going to turn and I, you know, image this turning down the volume of any of the inner negative criticism. Mm -hmm. And, and then I'm intentional about, yeah, there's, I have all these emotions going on. There are so many thoughts inside my head. There's a lot of tools that productivity to say to like a second brain to get those out of your head. You know, like I, I sometimes use my phone as a recording device and just record my thoughts to, to, so I can uh, say it and forget it. Okay. But that sense of just practicing, I'm in control of my, my, of my self-talk and I want to be focused. There's so much going on. I can't, and then recognizing our limits. That's the other thing that's, that's like, I what know what you can control, be yeah. aware of that and just, and then decide how you will respond because be, you're also aware of, I can't do it all in 24 hours. Right. I can't do it all probably in my lifetime. So, so then you, those constraints can help you be focused and say, what do I, what's important to me now? What is important to me in this moment? So those are kind of like three, it's almost like this three-legged triangle of mindfulness that says, what can I control? How am I going to talk to myself? How am I going to choose to respond to this situation? Because I know I have limited time in this day and on this planet. So what is most essential to me right now? Yeah. And then if I pause and take a moment about that, then I think, oh, I'm not going to worry about it all those other balls swimming over there. That's, you know, that's not important. That doesn't matter. But what matters is this relationship, this moment of having a conversation, a crucial conversation with our team or our management about how we want to move something forward in technology. Um, you know, that what's most important to me is I need to work out and stay consistent in my workout. I need, you know, and just to be focused or I need to pause and do some journaling or I need to rest. Yeah. and just say but it's done with intention that's that's the the thing about mindfulness that the action and presence is done with intention for sure yeah i, I think the self-talk is huge and i think that people need to be aware of that it's something that you just have to be aware of it's something that you need to start paying attention to to realize you know because no one's really taught that no one's no one's taught how to talk to themselves i've, I've kind of seen yeah. in my life and and in the past, I would say I had terrible self-talk. And I, I think what's actually helped it a lot for me is the journaling mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, learning more about myself because it's like you're forced to to put your thoughts on a page, right? And then, it, and then it starts transforming your thoughts even without doing that throughout the day. But it's just like starting to do that is what helps you kind of get in that habit of improving your self-talk, almost like coaching yourself. So my, my question for you is what are some good prompts for people because we talked about you know just talking um or writing on a page kind of what you're thinking what you're feeling but what if someone's just getting into journaling and they want to kind of start transforming their self-talk um and the thoughts and their, their mindfulness practices what are some good prompts for people to start with that's a great question and i've been working on in my own writing uh, about journaling so let me just say just a little bit more about journaling because yeah. i sometimes run into friends or people who journal say, I'm not really not a writer. And I said, that's okay. When I talk about one sentence journaling, I'm saying that could be a word, a yeah. phrase, a sentence. Yeah. Uh, it could also be a photograph. I mean, I'm, I, photography is my other uh, passion. And I, on my app on my phone, I do one photograph a day Really? on what the, you know, taking, what did I, what caught my attention today? Yeah. And I journal about that, or you can drawing or sketching or speaking. It's like, I, I don't have time to write, but can you talk into your self, like do the self-talk to yourself and record it? Uh, so journaling could be that way. 
And the other thing that's important too is the sense of prompts. I tweet about journal prompts. I actually have a, a, a email course free that's on journal getting started in one sentence journaling that gives you a journal prompt every day, a different journal prompt every day that focuses on your purpose, on how you want to stay focused and have practice mindfulness. What's important to me is the journal prompt. What helps you is that will help you write consistently, will help you write every day or journal every day. The other thing along with that is that give yourself, say, for example, the weekend, like the time to rest, give yourself a break from writing and take the time to read back over what you wrote over the week and then say to yourself, do I notice any patterns? Has something spoke to me that surprised me or yeah. some, do I see a trend in something? Yeah. It's that sense of journal and reflect. And then the next week go into, I'm going to, you know, uh, pay attention so the, I have lots of uh, um, thoughts and ideas on journal prompts. And, and like I said, but what's most important is what helps you be focused and consistent in the moment and helps you keep writing and journaling. Yeah, I, I've noticed um, I, even some days I'll just have one word on because I'll prompt myself, but then I'll just have one word answers. And I think that's OK. You know, you don't need to have pressure on yourself. It's not like you have to be a writer. It's just it's just starting to think about these things right so it doesn't need to be a lot people think that this is like a huge habit it can literally take as, as little as like you said a minute a day you know, right. you just write your thoughts a little bit and start thinking about it get started with it um so and it can be yeah. super helpful. so I, I think it's one of the smallest habits that you can start that makes the biggest difference in your life honestly so i, I totally agree now here's a thought so you know it said what journal prompts but think about think about your life think about fitness or if you're working your your goals what are you working on this week what are you reading this week yeah. what are you listening to or watching podcast shows or things to help you in your own personal development and improvement or say like your goal i mean i've always had this goal i wanted to be able to do a pull up you know <laughs> as, a, as a woman it's like i'm not really strong but i try you know yeah. the sense of that but the, setting a goal or for myself as i'm aging because I, mean, I want to be stronger and so the sense of be focused but so then it's like i i have so i thought about that and then i thought well what strength do i want to pay attention to like today is my journal prompt or something or think of the word strength and so this week i'm going to think about strength my mental strength my physical strength my weakness that maybe like my achilles heel that sometimes trips me up and my self-talk sometimes that gets in the way and though, so those things are just things about my own things in your own personal life that could be a journal prompt for you. Like you said, one thought, one word, one sentence, a drawing. Um, and I just want to add a, one story about drawing. When I was a nun, I went on a 30 day retreat with a couple of my other sisters. And, you know, we spent at most of the day in silence. And then we would gather at dinner together just to talk about our experience. Well, one of the sisters, English was not her first language, and but she spoke English very well, and she write, would journal, but she said, I find the most expression of how my day went or my insights into my spirituality by drawing. And so every day for 30 days, she drew this incredible watercolor, like 11 by 14 work of art, a painting. And then she'd show, and I'm just in awe, you know, and I would write writing and things like that, but it was be that sense of drawing or a sketching or expression or art or hobby that you have could be a way of quote journaling. Yeah. Again, it's getting out of us so that we can look at that self-reflection that can drive us towards um, meaning, meaning and significance and connection with ourselves and with other people. 100%. Yeah, I think we lose connection with ourselves, especially in these with with so much going on. It's mm -hmm. like we lose that connection with ourselves. We we lose that expression too. It's almost just like we're we're just doing these mindless tasks that we you know, these tedious tasks throughout the day and it's just if you can pause, you know, do a little bit of that expression, you know, have a little bit of time with yourself, um that'll help you kind of like have some more introspection, get to know yourself, be a little bit more aware of what you're feeling, how you're thinking. And I think that can transform and, and turn into a lot of growth for sure. Yes, yes. So. Yeah. And if you, if I could say this on your podcast, if you'd like to get it, if you're interested in one sentence journaling, if you'd like to learn more, it's easy. Just go to one, the number one sentence journaling.com. And uh, I have a 14 day free email course that you can do. Try it if you like it and uh, it's learning to help 
people practice, get into a consistent mindfulness practice. As you said, journaling is one of the easiest ways to get in, but don't let that word intimidate you. If you say you're not a writer, there's lots of other options and the, there's a daily prompt to help you just think about how do you want to grow as a person and be mindful and be mindfully present to life that sometimes feels like it is flying so fast before us. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. I'll definitely put that in the show notes. One sentence journaling.com. Very yeah. cool. Sweet. Well, um, what's what's next for you, Denise? I know that you write a lot on Twitter. You know, you you're like a, a lifelong um <laughs> ship 30 for 30, which is the course we did, guys, uh, for writing. Um, but what's what's in the works for you and what's next? So my what's hopefully was still in the works, you know, the sense of uh, I'll continue working as a program manager of my day job. And and but as a writer, I'm more finishing up a book on everyday mindfulness in the workplace nice. on some seven habits of that. I'm still it's not complete yet, but I'm hoping to finish that very soon awesome. and then pivot to some. I, I want to also offer I've gotten a lot of good feedback from my one sentence journaling course to cool. build out a few more journal prompts every day of the year, a different prompt each day and focus on different themes of, of our lives and personal development and just continue writing about mindfulness and, and hopefully doing more podcasts and speaking about yeah. developing because that sense of help, I want to help de people demystify what mindfulness is. It's something like the protoplasm in our body. It's, it's a tool that we can use to engage and connect in our everyday life and life that is flying by at us so fast. I mean, it's fun being in a bouncy house in a ball pit <laughs> and, and just embracing that and, and also say, how can I make the most of that? Yeah. And so that's what's next to me short term and long term. But who knows? It's like I love ta having a conversation. It's been great meeting you, Cade, yeah, and exactly. really connecting about uh, like the sense of personal wellness and health and fitness and well-being and overall. And I love your approach about helping coaching and fitness, but really looking at the whole of the person uh, with mindset and other things you've done on your podcast. So those are next. And I hope, you know, like that we continue to stay connected over the years yeah. to, to really see the watch you grow it in your business and coaching as well. So awesome. yeah, thank you. Very cool. Sweet. And then where can the, where can the people find you? Where, where so you I, 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 I think in the in this video, my Twitter handle is info piles on Twitter. I also write on Medium, Denise Piles, and I also write on LinkedIn, Denise Piles. So those are places to find me. Uh, and I uh, mm -hmm. one sentence journaling dot com is my uh, um, one of the places to sign up for the course. Awesome. And um, those are the places to find me right now. Very cool. Well, awesome, Denise. This has been awesome. I, I appreciate you great. coming on. Yeah, I know that I know that the the listeners are getting some great value out of this, guys. But like I said, you know, on the Elevate Everyday podcast, it's not just about listening. You got to put this stuff into action right away. You know, we've got these experts on the podcast um, to help inspire you, but don't just get inspired. Take action immediately when you're listening to this. Okay. So go get started, start your journaling habit. You guys, I'm gonna have expert guests on the podcast every single week. So make sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. If you're listening on Spotify, give me a good review and just keep listening <laughs> and share this with a friend if they can benefit from it. And guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. But in the meantime, elevate every day. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.